The VIC-20 is a very flexible little machine and allows us to choose which area of memory represents the screen map. One interesting thing we can do is use this to visualise a section of memory such as the zero page, like this. This can create quite interesting patterns on the screen and allows us to actually see some of the processing on the VIC in action. In order to visualise the zero page, we need to tell the VIC chip to point its screen map address to location zero. Uh, we do this using uh, bits in location hex 9002 and uh, location x9005 and uh, the way the VIC chip works is that it uses a 14-bit screen map address so we can see this on the right hand side at the top we have the normal unexpanded VIC or, or with a 3k RAM expansion the location for the screen map for one of those systems so it normally defaults to location 1e00 so we can see the bits at the top there we can see how uh, bits 7 to 4 of location 9005 set that part of the address and then we have bit 7 of 9002 to set the other bit in the 14-bit address and then the rest is zero so we can only set that upper part of it and then that will point to the screen map and then we can see how below we're actually sending it to location zero one interesting thing to note on this is that when we set this we actually have to set bit 7 of location 9005 to 1 even though it'll be changed to 0 in the final address for the screen map and that's just because of the peculiar way that the VIC chip works. The location uh, bit 7 of 9002 also changes the colour map as well so that's something to be aware of. In compute Jim Butterfield was credited with demonstrating how we can set the screen map to start at location 0 uh, which then allows us of course to observe the first two pages of memory. Well, that's not entirely true. It allows us to almost observe the first two pages of memory because a 22 by 23 screen will only be 506 bytes, so we miss the last six bytes, but it's near enough. On an unexpanded VIC, we don't need to worry about what is already in location 36869 and 36866, and therefore we can easily set the colour map to black text on a white background to make all the locations visible, and then set the screen map to location using the following. So we can see the first thing sets the colour map and then the next line alters the location of the screen map. The remaining bits of location 36866 set the number of columns displayed and that's why we're setting it to 22 here. And then uh, the remaining bits of location 36869 set the uh, character map address. On an unexpanded VIC it sets to 0 as default so therefore we don't need to worry about it and we can just set it to 128 because that's bit 7 set which although that will change to 0 giving us a full 14 bit address of 0 bit 7 needs to be set in, uh, in, in that address. Right, well, here we can see. Uh, we can see on the eighth line down, uh, near the middle, we can see the jiffy clock counting up. And we can see two lines below, slightly to the left, we can see the cursor blink countdown, which normally counts 20 jiffies before each blink of a cursor. And then to the right of that, we can see a character flicking between A and at. So at is zero, A is one. So this is actually the cursor blinking. So we can see it blinking here in, uh, in zero page. We can see lots of at symbols on this page and that's because the at symbol is zero. So naturally we would see lots of zeros in zero page. Uh, not because it's zero page, but because a zero is a common, uh, a common number to use. So if we have a look at the key press matrix, if I, have, if I press the I key, we can see on the right hand side, near the middle, we can see the character changing. So this is each time I press the I key. Okay. And then to the left of that, we'll see it again, uh, just to the left of where we were counting the cursor blink. There we are. So I'm pressing the I key. If I change to lowercase, then we can see another character changing and that's the last key press ASCII. So if we see that it's on the tenth row and it's uh, one, two, three, four, five in from the right. So I'm going to press the Q key and we'll see it change to a Q. E, R, S, so there we are. So that's the, the ASCII value of the uh, last key pressed. So we can see some more values changing within zero page if I enter a loop. So I'll enter a loop which is just 
4a equals 1 to 1000, print, hello, xi. And there we are, we can see our loop going through. Zero page is an interesting one to visualize because it is important on the 6502 as it allows machine code programs to use shorter and faster instructions and therefore BASIC and kernel make heavy use of the locations on this page for a frequently used data storage. The screen map in front of us, or at least the screen displayed in front of us, is actually displaying two pages. So the upper part of the screen is displaying page zero, and then the lower part of the screen is displaying the stack. Now, it was actually a stack within a stack, because the 6502 itself reserves 256 bytes for a stack beginning at location hex 100, but within that, BASIC uses location, uh, well, BASIC creates a stack from location 140 for itself. We can show how this can be exercised by repeatedly calling a nested go sub. So if I enter the line 10 go sub 10, and then run that, and then we'll see at the bottom, we'll see the stack filling up. There we are. So we can see how that's changed as it repeatedly called and then filled up the stack until it became too great. To, to hold. Well I've got the Vic busy again running through a loop. Uh, hopefully you found this little video interesting. It's just a bit of fun. It doesn't have the most practical purpose in the world but I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at Zero Page as things are being processed through it. There's some more information on the Tech Tinkering article associated with this video. Please have a look at some of our other videos and as usual please share and subscribe.